Venus enters Capricorn, the sign of Saturn, on Friday, December 9th, and until January 2nd, we will become more steady, conservative, a little bit traditional and hardworking when it comes to art, love, and beauty. Let's take a closer look and break it down for all 12 signs. My name is Anastasia, I'm a traditional Western astrologer specializing in natal relationship and predictive readings. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe, leave me a like or a comment. Any help, any interaction with you guys helps me grow and encourages me to bring more videos your way. And I really, really appreciate all of the lovely comments you leave for me. Before I dive in, a couple of business management kind of things. I am hosting a webinar dedicated to astrology of 2023. There is, um, it's, it's gonna be December 17th, 11.30 a.m. Eastern. There's a link below. Take advantage of the early bird rate and reserve your spot for $15 until December 7th. It's gonna be $20 afterwards. We'll be talking about the major changes next year, like Pluto entering Aquarius, Saturn shifting into Pisces, Venus retrograde, eclipses, the notes changing signs, there's lots and lots to talk about. And another super exciting thing, if you watch my videos closely, you know that Jupiter is currently in Pisces and Jupiter leaves Pisces on December 20th. And Pisces is the sign of rulership for Jupiter, so it's a really strong, empowered planet of optimism, growth, abundance, success, spiritual coherence, right? And so Jupiter is about to leave and it's not going to be back until 2033. We don't know what the world is going to be like, hopefully some great things, but I created candles and oils. They're blue because it's Jupiter in Pisces. They have amethyst stones in them. There's four. Four is the number of Jupiter. Amethyst is the stone of Jupiter. They smell like figs. The smell, <laughs> the scents of Jupiter are usually like rich and sweet, but also kind of like abundant. So it definitely has that. Really good for people with Jupiter in Virgo, Gemini, and Capricorn, the signs Jupiter struggles in, or anywhere in the eighth, 12th, or sixth houses. Or, you know, if you'd like some optimism, cheerfulness, and abundance, because we're not gonna get the same Jupiter for the next 11 years. Okay, now that's out of the way. I appreciate you guys listening. Venus enters Capricorn. On December 9th, stays in Capricorn until January 2nd. Does any of you have Venus in Capricorn? Let me know in the comments below. I'm curious to hear if what I'm about to talk about resonates with you or not. So Venus is the planet of a court, of beauty, of balance, harmony, friendship, and love. Whenever Venus is placed in a sign other than its own, Taurus or Libra, or the sign she's exalted in, Pisces, she has to, actually even in Pisces, whenever she's placed in the sign other than Libra or Taurus, she has to act in accordance to the rules of the planet in charge of that sign. So when she's placed in Capricorn, Capricorn is a Saturn ruled sign. So she's in the home of Saturn, right? If you can imagine the home of Saturn, probably gray colors, um, very sparse furniture, only necessities, maybe some diplomas in the back, some accolades of Saturn. <laughs> it's, it's a fun exercise to imagine what the home of Saturn might be like. But she's in the Saturn sign, so she becomes Saturnian. She takes on some of those qualities and Capricorn is not just Saturn ruled, it's also a yin Saturn, so more feminine Saturn, not necessarily Saturn of Aquarius, where we seek to break down structures and build new ones. Saturn of Capricorn is a lot more about working within the existing structures. It's kind of like, how can I maximize the system, the rules, the existing environment to become the best version of myself. So it's like things to remember when you're looking at Venus and Capricorn, right? More tra traditional, more conservative, more structured. It's an earth sign and it's a cardinal sign. Earth signs seek stability. They want to 
have things that are long lasting, cardinal signs initiate things. So here we're trying to initiate relationships, projects, art, projects that are solid and long lasting. What are some of the things we can expect on a collective level, on a personal level, on a romantic level? First of all, because we're looking at Saturn, and Saturn is quite cautious and careful, so we're likely to be more cautious and careful when it comes to love. Capricorn, Venus is not the time to rush into relationships. We want to get to know someone. We want to lay a firm foundation. We want to make sure that we're liked or loved, that there is commitment from the other person before we open up. So generally, very commitment-oriented sign, wants stability, but is not quick to rush into things. So we're coming from the energy of Sagittarius that was a lot more playful, go with the flow, and the romantic flow shifts to be more skeptical, skeptical, slow, steady. We may be drawn to more darker things, right? Saturn rules over the darker time of the year, both Capricorn and Aquarius are in the northern hemisphere, are like really dark. <laughs> I can tell I'm filming this close to four and it's already looking like it's night outside, so time for bed. But <laughs> but it's, it's, it's a dark time of year, it's the cold time of year, there's not much around, so there's natural kind of like dryness to the sense of humor, there's sometimes more like darker sense of humor so you might naturally you might like suddenly be more interested in um a new comedian who talks about death for example there might be like interest in death and things like that because it's a saturn ruled sign there's a lot of commitment right like i said the sign is interested in commitment but there's also a lot of loyalty and steadiness and stability and control and willingness to work at things, at relationships, very, very, if you have this placement or if you know anyone with this placement, they make, I think, the most loyal friends, the most loyal companions, because once they have run you through their tests, <laughs> or once they have seen that you're worthy of their trust, they will be there for you. When it comes to art as well, we are more interested in perfecting things. We have the stamina of Saturn, we have the dedication, we're willing to work really hard to become better at the things that we are. We may become more serious about our finances, right? More skeptical, more more kind of, um, what's the word? Basically, we're not going to be frivolous when it comes to money. Um, there might be a danger of being too self-protective and because you're trying to make sure that the other person likes you maybe you're not showing your feelings as freely so be careful of that and like avoid avoid being too judgmental as well because it's an earth sign it's a saturn ruled sign there might be that tendency to be kind of to think you know better <laughs> We may be attracted to people who are more successful, people who are older, people who are more mature and established, and people who can bring structure into our life, right? Someone you might not normally normally not go for can be more attractive to you right now because you can see a long-term future with them. Some of the darker manifestations of this placement might be being jealous, being possessive, being stingy with affection or feelings because you're afraid of rejection. And as far as as far as um, your work goes, for example, this could be a good period to build connections with others, to reach to mentors, to ask people for help, to even even do some kind of Kickstarter, Kickstarter campaign to get support from other people because as long as you're focused on the long term and you are investing energy into it, you are more likely to find success. Now let's take a look at Venus through all 12 rising signs and 12 houses to see what it might bring for you. 
For Aries rising, Venus goes into the 10th house and you might be attracted to someone who's either your boss or someone who is boss-like, someone who has a successful career. You can meet someone at this time through your work, through a networking event, for example. Venus entering the 10th house a lot of times gives us an opportunity to be more creative professionally and take on projects that truly bring us joy. It's a lovely time to present any ideas, to speak in front of other people, to pioneer any projects professionally because it will be harder for others to say no to you. And you're also likely to express yourself in a charming way with more authority and with more innovation. For Taurus rising, Venus goes into the ninth house and Taurus risings might enjoy taking classes to perfect their knowledge, expanding on your skills, on your hobbies, learning more about philosophy, religion, ninth house and Venus, Tantra, maybe looking into traveling, either going on a trip or looking into where you would want to go, somewhere where you will feel like happy, um, <laughs> really happy, not just like happy, actually happy. Um, your soul seeks adventure, right? Your, your soul with Venus here wants to, to do new things. Of course, it's Capricorn, so you're going to be very steady, very serious, and maybe not take any crazy leaps or not necessarily book a spontaneous vacation, but you can definitely um, plan for it or go on a trip. So yeah, take a class, go on a trip, Dating someone foreign or being attracted to foreign people, working with foreign people could be significant right now and they can actually bring a lot of insights into your projects. As well as maybe you will be interested in teaching, I think here. And if there's any legal matters, if there's any writing projects you're doing, those should go well as well. For Gemini rising, Venus enters the eighth house. This is a good sign for your partner, for their finances. Sometimes Venus in the eighth brings benefits to the person you're with. If you have any debts, if you have any loans, if there's any taxes that are outstanding and you're, figure, you're getting ready to pay, this might be the good time to take care of those, right? To get a plan into place. Give and take dynamics should be smoother. Sometimes Venus in the eighth house brings gifts through other people, like maybe an opportunity, maybe there is a concert you've wanted to go to and someone you know brings you a ticket and gifts you a ticket. Your interest in mysteries, your interest in tarot, in astrology is likely to be highlighted and your intuition I think should be stronger. I would really recommend you trust your intuition. For Cancer Rising, quite exciting. Venus goes into your seventh house. Seventh house is the place of relationships. A very natural, happy place for Venus. It might be a good time for you to partner up with others, to start a business together, or to go on dates if you're in a relationship. Spend more time with your partner if you're single and considering re-entering dating scene, this would be a good time. If you're not interested in dating, your other relationships might be going well and just more smooth. Meeting someone, you're already, as a Cancer rising, you're already attracted to someone Saturnian, stable, older, mature, but there is even more of a chance right now that the person you meet has those qualities, has that traditional, steady, reliable energy about them. For Leo rising, Venus enters the sixth house, and this is a good time to mend any professional relationships. If you've had any issues with your colleagues, things are likely to smooth out and even out, potentially because you are coming across as someone who is better at problem solving, better at conflict resolution. Sixth house oftentimes is the place of hurdles. It's the place of overcoming difficulty. You may find a lot more joy in helping others, be that professionally or through volunteer work. Um, maybe you decide to volunteer at an animal shelter. Six House is also responsible for the animal shelters, for pets, basically. There might be more 
there might be more action at work. Maybe you're going out with your colleagues a lot more. Maybe there's a Christmas party. Oh, those days when I used to have, when there used to be a company that threw Christmas parties. Maybe I should throw one for myself and some friends. But yeah, there might be a lot of joy in the sector of work. And even if there is a lot of work, you're sort of able to put a creative spin on it and find enjoyment. Um, enjoyment? Um, listen to music, do some kind of exciting things while you're handling errands. For Virgo rising, Venus goes into the fifth house. Venus rejoices in the fifth, so this is a beautiful time for creative inspiration, start, re, restart a hobby, start some kind of creative project, go dancing, go for a run if this is something you enjoy. Fifth house is also the place of sports sometimes and being competitive. So creative competition, creative spark is likely with this placement. Romantically, this might be the time when you draw someone in and manifest something new and something exciting. Um, not likely you're being super active about it, but just even planting the seeds, setting intentions, especially around uh, winter solstice when the sun enters Capricorn and then we have a new moon in Capricorn on the 23rd there is a lot of focus on your place of play so if there is no one on your romantic horizon you can definitely benefit from creating some fun in your life right like don't wait for someone to buy you flowers <laughs> get yourself some flowers like I did these were actually used for the Jupiter candle and oil creation isn't this super cute? <laughs> For Libra rising, Venus goes into the fourth house. This is supportive because Mercury is about to go retrograde in your fourth house. Pluto is still in the fourth house. And there's been a lot of, over the last few years, actually, there's been a lot of family karma sorting through, figuring out what makes you feel happy, what makes you feel secure. So Venus here can help smooth over any family issues. Any family misunderstandings, any difficulty, it could be a good time to reconnect with family members. Beautifying your home might be a good time right now, you know, like buying. It's funny, I was just looking at like new bed sheets and comforter today. And I'm a Libra rising, so maybe I'm already feeling this energy coming up. So spending some time to make your home cozier and prettier and more stylish as a Libra rising you naturally have a good sense of style so it might be a good time to do that if you are a Scorpio rising Venus goes into your third house and this is the place of communication technology siblings everyday life the rounds you make when you go from work to home and back again 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 so Venus here should smooth over any difficulties any challenges in your communication if you've had any issues with siblings or neighbors, they should be going, they should kind of, you know, disappear slowly. There might be more ideas in your mind. There might be more creation, more using your hands. Third house is the house of skills and hobbies and passions. You know, if you are someone who likes sewing, for example, this would be a great time to take on the hobby and invest into something that makes you happy. And you may end up being Venus, a peacemaker, a diplomat, a mediator when it comes to conflicts and the environment around you using your very strong, beautiful communication right now. Because it's both, it's both beautiful communication, but it also has authority already. If you are a Scorpio rising, having Capricorn be your third house of communication, so you will be able to swoop in and help manage any conflicts or any issues in your environment. If you are a Sag rising, get ready to spend some money because Venus is entering your second house. And while this could be a sign of money coming your way, for sure, there might be some bonuses, some rewards, returns on investment, a raise. This could be as likely a sign of you spending money shopping buying gifts and of course you know it's christmas season so if you need if you need some gifts you know i'm making products right now check out my website but 
Venus in the second is nice, right? It's the house of money, it's the house of values, and Venus coming here should make you feel more valued and appreciated and respected and maybe even financially secure. So I think this is a good time for any professional advancement or any relationship mending. For Capricorn rising, Venus enters the first house, which is super exciting. Any planet in the first house is embodied and we take it on and we wear it for the period that it's in that house. So from December 9th until January 2nd, you are blessed with more charm, with more beauty, with more attraction, magneticism, magnetic star quality, let's say. So it's, it's a good time to upgrade your wardrobe, take care of your hair, your nails, any beauty procedures, great time. And investing into yourself, investing into pleasure, taking yourself out, giving, giving yourself gifts. Like it might just be like really hard for you to say no um, to treating yourself. And other people will likely support you, will bring good things your way, maybe even support you with some gifts. Lovely time as well, I think, as like starting any writing projects and working on um, creative projects, beauty related things. R romantically, this could be a lovely time because you're just exuding this feminine, attractive, magnetic energy of Venus. For Aqua Rising, Venus goes into the 12th house and your love life is going into hibernation mode a little bit. Doesn't mean nothing is going on, but whenever Venus is in the 12th house, we tend to want to retreat our romantic life and things tend to happen behind the scenes. Things might be busy, lots might be going on, but you're sort of quiet and private and you don't necessarily sharing it with other people. As always, a um, bit of a warning here because Venus in the 12th house can be naturally interested in drama and sometimes seek drama, sometimes instigate drama, sometimes attract drama. So be careful creating drama. But at the same time, you know, if there is some tensions coming to the surface, maybe it's something you need to address. Maybe it's fears you need to talk about. Maybe it's insecurities that need to be looked at and held closely before you let them go. But if you're single and you are knowingly entering a relationship with someone who is married, maybe be warned and watch out for making mistakes. But creatively, you can be very inspired, just likely privately, like behind the scenes, you know, it's Mercury at this point is already in your 12th house, Sun is going to go into your 12th house. So you're doing a lot of, in, it's, it, there's a lot of introspection, Saturn is still in your first house until March next year. So there's a lot of growing, thinking about yourself and perhaps letting unhealthy habits and patterns go. Finally, for Pisces rising, Venus enters the 11th house. 11th house is the place of networks, your social life, social media, mentors, or people who you share things with, people you share similar interests, people you go to school with, anyone that you are united with. So you can expect more opportunities to network, more opportunities to socialize with others, your charm is likely to shine in group context and when you are surrounded by people. Could be a lovely time to reach out to anyone for help in your network, right? Like if you have a project or if you're looking for a job, um, go through your phone list, ask people to ask people to ask people for contacts you need. Working in group context will be enjoyable, spending time with others, just like your social life can be a lot busier, a lot more exciting, and your phone might be lighting up more. So this is it. Thank you for being here. Um, say hello in the comments below and enjoy. Enjoy this transit. It's nice to have Venus and Capricorn through the holidays. She's not the strongest Venus, but she has triplicity, dignity, and earth signs because all earth signs have that sensuality and appreciation for earthy pleasures. So 
I'm excited. I hope you are as well. Talk to you soon. Bye.